Okay, why is the camera? Is the camera working? That was weird. Why was I talking like that? Anyway, check. <laughs> what's up, y'all? This is Charles of Charles and Ezra. We're checking out uh, Labyrinth by Randall Sullivan. Uh, on the eve of the, the latest arrest in the Tupac case, we're going to check out this book. This is, book was uh, uh, dealing with a police officer uh, named Russell Poole who investigated the Tupac and the Biggie Smalls um, case. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it. This is actually chapter 10 where uh, Russell Poole is trying to um, investigate the Biggie Smalls um, case and also Tupac Secure. So we're going to go ahead and check it out, check it out and go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, guys. I'm going to come back to my reaction. Appreciate it. Russell Poole wasn't the LAPD's choice to be the officer who arrested Ray Perez but the department continued to place the detective in the right place at the wrong time. Poole and a female narcotics investigator named Diana Smith were assigned to perform surveillance on Perez's house in Ladera Heights on the morning of August 25, 1998, shortly after the department's brass decided it was time finally to charge the crash detective with grand theft. We were sitting out front when we saw the garage door come up, Poole recalled. Denise Perez, his wife, backs her BMW out and leaves for work. SWAT is supposed to make the arrest, and an hour later they're working their way toward us, but on the radio we hear that our cover may have been blown. One of the chiefs had ordered that Denise Perez be pulled aside at work and asked if her husband is at home. That tips her off. She goes back to her cubbyhole and calls home. Ray Perez comes out a few minutes later, climbs into his red Ford Expedition, and takes off. We catch up and follow. Diana is driving. I call in a request for an air unit and backup because we're going to pull him over. We're going north on La Brea by now. We pull up next to the expedition. I point and hold up my badge. Perez gets this wild look in his eyes for a moment, and I think maybe this is going to turn into a pursuit or even a shootout, but then he pulls over to the curb just as the air unit and a black and white show up. I take Perez over to my car and put my cuffs on him. I can see his heart literally pounding through his shirt, but he won't make a sound. That's when I notice the briefcase in his vehicle and ask what it's for. He says, that's for my lawyer. I was on my way to my lawyer's office. He's a cop, so he knows he has at least a legal argument to suppress if we open the briefcase and find evidence against him. Mm -hmm. I wanted to open it anyway, but when I phoned the DA in Rosenthal, he says no. It was a stupid mistake, but Rosenthal ended up making a lot of stupid mistakes. And Perez Perez wouldn't wouldn't say say another another word. word. Mm. For Poole, his arrest of Ray Perez was considerably less... Perez is the officer. He was an LAPD officer that apparently was involved, that was was apparently working as uh, as an off-duty cop. He would work with death row. And he apparently is the... uh, suspected shooter in the Biggie Smalls case, and this is what's going on. They're trying to pin him with the case, whatever. Significant than his role as evidence coordinator during the search of Perez's home 19 days earlier. The search had produced a trove of 228 suspicious items stashed in nooks and crannies all over the house. In terms of the drug theft, perhaps the strongest evidence was a carton of papers that included receipts for thousands of dollars in cash deposits to a Wells Fargo bank account, records of large purchases on an array of credit cards, documents related to the purchase of real estate in Puerto Rico and California, eight pages of cellular phone records, plus assorted phone and address books. Poole was most interested, however, in the 59 items recovered from cardboard boxes in the basement of the house. These included not only hundreds of rounds of live ammunition that ranged from 12-gauge shotgun shells to 22 caliber rifle bullets, but a large assortment of folding knives and a perplexing collection of replica firearms that included an Uzi air gun, a 357 Colt python with a plugged barrel, several realistic-looking cap guns, one with a screw and silencer, as well as 9mm and 38 caliber models. These plastic weapons were stage props and children's toys, but they looked convincing in photographs, and Poole believed, correctly, that this was their purpose. It turned out that Perez and his buddies were planting them on suspects, mm. Poole explained. 
taking photographs at the scene and using those as evidence in court. Perez had cached a huge quantity of stuff stolen from the LAPD, including nearly two dozen keys to police vehicles, several raid jackets, and three crowd control helmets. What caught Poole's attention, though, were the police scanners Perez kept concealed in his basement. Since starting on the Biggie Smalls case, I had kept coming across these crime reports in which the perpetrators used police radios and scanners, Poole recalled. Mark Anthony Bell said Suge Knight and his thugs had used them to monitor the cops while they had him locked in that room upstairs. And the USC student said he had heard Mac and the other two bank robbers listening to police scanners. There were all these reports of the death row people using them in and around their studios in Tarzana. Perez certainly didn't need them for framing suspects, and there was no evidence he used them in his dope dealing. For me, this was a possible link to Mac and to death row, but once again, I couldn't get anyone interested in pursuing it. Shortly before the search of the Perez residence, Fred Miller had responded to increased pressure to make something happen in the Biggie Smalls murder investigation and silence Poole by orchestrating a series of raids on the offices of Death Row Records production companies and on assorted homes and businesses owned by Suge Knight. Yeah, a a fishing stuff. expedition, Suge Knight's latest attorney, Robin Yanis, called it, and Russell Poole agreed. I warned everyone that was the wrong way to go, Poole recalled. To get to a guy like Knight, you have to go from the bottom up, and the cops who worked for him were the best way to do that. Those guys were the weak link, and I think a lot of them would have rolled over if they'd been brought up on charges, criminal charges especially. I've seen it before. Once these guys are in the court system and know they're facing prison time, they will talk. Cops understand better than anybody that once arrests are made, it becomes a race to see who can cut a deal first. <laughs> right. But all those raids accomplished was to make everyone scatter. The LAPD trumpeted its seizure of an Impala SS owned by Suge Knight and let the news media know that forensics tests had turned up gunshot residue around the driver's side door. But that SS was red, not black, and the gunshot residue had been found nearly a year and a half after the Biggie Smalls shooting. Poole's refusal to abandon his interest in the Biggie Smalls murder was making his position on the task force and his assignment to the robbery homicide division as well increasingly untenable. I was complaining that we had had a series of incomplete investigations and that it was orchestrated to be that way, Poole explained. I had become convinced that LAPD officers affiliated with Death Row Records had been involved in the conspiracy to kill Biggie Smalls, and none of the brass wanted to hear that. Hmm. It didn't help that Poole persisted in pushing the investigation toward even more untested theories of police involvement. When he learned that the bloody clothing and shell casings that the prosecution considered its most important physical evidence in the murder case against Snoop Dogg had been either lost, stolen, or discarded while in LAPD custody, Poole... Anyway, y'all, this is Labyrinth, man. This stuff is so good. Y'all, you check it out. Uh, it's a really good book. It's on uh, Audible by Randall Sullivan. Uh, the True Story and City of Lies and the corruption with the LAPD in both cases, Tupac and Norton, you know, Notorious B. Um, I don't know, man. You know, Keith and he just got arrested. Also, they said that uh, they're realizing now that Orlando, people have been saying for years that Orlando Anderson shot Tupac. Orlando Anderson did not shoot Tupac from what they're saying. They're saying that, it's, that it was by a guy named Big Dre who was in the vehicle, the Cadillac, that was that had Keith D, Orlando Anderson, I think, and another guy which is keeping is the only lone survivor of the people that were in the car that night everybody else has passed away uh but they said that big big dre was the one who shot out the window to hit to, to shoot at tupac and should um so they are already pulling up stuff already um this is going to be i think this is going to be one of the most well first of all it's, it's, it's one of the most unsolved crimes in, in history and this is going to be one of the most looked at trials in history i'm thinking on some because they're going to start uncovering they just uncovered that and the guy just got arrested with two or three days ago so it's going to be interesting once he goes to trial and they start talking to people that i mean it's 27 years ago i mean it's going to be interesting to see how this trial works out a lot of these people have passed on um one of the witnesses that witnessed tupac being shot which is his friend Gaddafi, who ended up passed away, I think, six months after Tupac got 
got uh, deleted. He passed away six months later. Um, he said that it was a big black arm that came out of the window and was firing, firing into the BMW. And uh, Orlando Anderson was a skinny cat. He was a skinny young dude. So that part right there kind of didn't match up. So now they're saying that big. So now it makes sense because they said that Big Dre, who was in the car, they said he was about six foot four and was a big 300. He was about 350 to 400 pounds. So now that Gaddafi gave a statement saying it was a big black arm, now it kind of makes sense. Anyway, man, what y'all think about this, man? Check out Labyrinth and subscribe to my channel, Charles and Ezreal, and leave your comments. Let me know what y'all think. Appreciate it.